Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Friday morning here in Australia, market has bounced back, so up to 2.7, well, over $2.7 trillion now, up 3.4% overall, and look, the Bitcoin dominance is dropping, so it is starting to look like 2017. <laughs> I mean, Bitcoin dominance is dropping around Thanksgiving is when things really started to go crazy, so... You know, is this about to play out exactly the same? It's definitely got that feel about it at the moment. But again, I'm just not so sure about it because everyone thinks it's going to happen. But in saying that, maybe that's exactly why it is going to happen. <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see. It's so hard to know. Like I said, you know, I've got my bags packed. If it doesn't go lower and I can't buy any more for cheaper, then it's <laughs> not a big deal. Uh, but if it does, I have some cash sitting on the side. All right, volumes down a little bit. That's interesting, uh, down quite a lot. BTC price almost getting back up to that kind of $59,000 range. Not quite there yet. Just a little bit over 58500 And look, gas prices have come down now. I heard somewhere, I can't remember, but I think Chico Crypto maybe might have said that there's some big Ethereum news to come out soon, and it'll be interesting to see exactly what that is. I think there's another part of the Beacon Chain rollout that's supposed to come in sort of early December, so I think that's probably what it's going to be, but we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, if it can help fix the gas prices, that would be amazing. Again, this is $7.36, and that's for a very basic transaction, you know, basically sending ETH from one wallet to somewhere else. Outside of that, anything smart contract is going to cost a whole lot more. But anyway, let's move on and have a look at the market. Almost a sea of green. There doesn't look to be too much red there at all, at least in the top few at the moment. But there's always exceptions to the rule. There we go, crypto.com. It pumps so hard, of course it was going to have a pullback. That's just the way it works. It can't not. All right, so what's done the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100? Whew, Gala just continues to fly. A near Ethereum name service has done well. Live Peer, good lord, out of nowhere, Live Peer comes back to life. This is definitely getting that 2017 feel about it at the moment. I mean, you know, coins are just pumping double digits. So, yeah, beware, folks. Get ready to take some gains if things continue to get really, really crazy. That would be my personal opinion. Never financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor, so don't ever take it as that. Kadena just continues to pump. Oh, Immutable X. UFO Gaming has been on an absolute crazy streak. That is really uh, flying. Theta making some nice gains, which is good. Zcash, Filecoin. <laughs> I held on to that for so long. I mean, oh, yeah. I made some money off it, but now, of course, it's starting to move. Terra Luna making a move. Look, even SHIB making a bit of a move. Is it, you know, going to last uh, for a while? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But look, the whole market is definitely starting to get quite bubbly. So what hasn't performed well then? All right, there we go. Crypto.com's down. Engine's down. Wax is down. And again, these are coins that were pumping just the other day. So, of course, they're going to have pullbacks. It's definitely going to, you know, it's not just going to continue to go up every single day. But keep an eye out for these coins in the next 24 to 48 hours because if things keep going the way they're going, then they are going to basically go back up again. And look, even the sandbox, which has gone absolutely mental, is having a bit of a pullback. But that doesn't mean that it's not going to pump again in the next few days. Axie Infinity, again, we got some news about Axie Infinity as well. So look, overall market's up 3.5%, which is nice. You know, we still got to get back to that $3 trillion mark. And then it'll be really interesting to see where we go from there do we get to the four five six seven eight nine trillion dollar mark you know the fabled sort of ten trillion dollar mark uh get up there with you know competing with gold and all the rest of it for the crypto space we'll have to wait and see all right let's have a look at the bitcoin chart Oof, looking nice 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 so it has rebounded and look we found the lows and again none of my buy orders got triggered they were literally a few dollars off every single time so that was quite frustrating and i'm not kidding like literally a couple of dollars each time i just couldn't get them but i'm just leaving them sit there maybe we have one last push down again maybe tomorrow over the weekend or something but 
If not, it doesn't matter. Then I've got cash sitting on the side. But things are looking nice. Again, Bollinger Bands starting to expand because the volatility is starting to get big. Now, again, it's not to say this can't roll over and go lower, but at the moment, we're waiting to see if this W pattern will play out. But again, Bitcoin really needs to get above. And look, we can already see it wicked up and then started to push down straight away. Really, I think once Bitcoin breaks above 60,000, if it does it in the next sort of day or two without going lower again, because that then invalidates it. But if we break over 60,000 sort of in the next day or two without again setting in a new low, then we could definitely push up and really start to rocket up faster. That's really what I'm looking out for at the moment. All right, a couple of stories. I said this the other day, Celsius Network, they were doing their Series B and they were looking to get 400 million and I said, I bet they probably get more. Well, guess what? They did. It's now been pushed out to $750 million. So they nearly doubled it in their Series B. So big money is being poured into Celsius Network. And again, they're like the new sort of financial institutions. Now, they did come out and say that the company at the time stressed that the round would boost their credibility with regulators. Now, I don't know about that, but I think it will definitely help. The regulators will have to come and have a look and say, because again, this isn't mum and pop money being put into Celsius. This isn't us buying the Celsius token or anything like that. This is big institutional money putting money into Celsius, buying basically sort of sh shares in their stock price. Now they're not, I don't think they have a stock price like that's traded on the stock market yet. That's what will come. These Series B, ACs and all the rest of it, these are people getting in early. This is again, big institutions pouring money into these things. So when the stock price does come out, then they generally sell a bit, get their money back and then they have their moon bags and all the rest of it i.e. what smart money does and that's why people talk about it and even i talk about it so celsius network um, you know we'll have to wait and see what happens with uh, you know there'll be a series c maybe even a series d e and f you know before they finally go live to the public this is the way it works you have to be a, an accredited investor to be able to participate in things like this and accredited investors is someone with over two million dollars in assets i think uh, over in the united states so, you know, for me and you, we're probably not going to be able to participate in these things. I don't know, maybe you've got $2 million. And if you do, congratulations to you. Unfortunately, I don't. I'm uh, quite a ways from that. But this is where the big money is made. Again, you can, if you're lucky enough and you can get to that accredited investor stage and then you get to take part in things like this, this is where the real big money is made. Because once Celsius, and it will happen eventually, finally goes, you know, uh, from a private company to a public company and they put stocks out, you can guarantee those stocks, well not guarantee, because I can never give you guarantees, but the stocks will most likely soar and then you'd wait for a pullback, which happens most of the time and then try and buy in. You know, you gotta be careful buying in on the first couple of days and weeks because a lot of things pump really hard and then they have uh, a fairly hefty pullback. But again, we'll have to wait and see, but it did not surprise me. I just remember hearing that 400 million. I was like, I bet you they have to increase that level. And they have. And it's now pushed them up to a valuation of $3.25 billion. So well done to Celsius. All right. Axie Infinity, their virtual land, they had a slot sell for 550 ETH. Now that came to a total of $2.3 million. Someone has bought up land there. Uh, and again, it's you know either going to be some whale or most likely some institution or something like that has bought up the land and it is the most that any virtual land has ever sold for. So it's an actual record, 550 ETH. So this whole metaverse gaming space, I mean, it is really going crazy. Now we'll have to wait and see whether this is the early part of that or the later part. Again, you know, you can just see how things are going at the moment. There is a lot of froth at the moment. Yeah, be prepared to take profits and be prepared to take them quickly is all I will say because things can get quite frothy and you know big corrections can come quite quickly. So you want to make sure that you have, excuse me, 
about to burp, I think, there, or hiccup one or the other, I don't know. You want to make sure you've got cash on the side to buy those dips. But again, don't just, you know, dive all in with the cash on the side. Layer into the dips because we don't, sorry, we didn't. We don't know just how low they're going to go. So again, you know, things at the moment, again, real frothy for me. Again, never financial advice. I'm just telling you. I'm not really buying into too much. There are some things that I'm going to buy into because they're down and they haven't been pumping for a while, but I'm not going to chase all the things that are pumping. And we'll get onto that. All right. Aave is one of the things I wanted to talk about. I told you about the plans for Aave Pro. Well, this is another story about it. So Aave plans to expand DeFi's reach. And it does here, but will the alt finally react? Look, it will eventually. We just don't know if it's going to yet. But this Aave Pro is what I wanted to tell you about. Now, they've called it ARC here. So ARC will still be governed by the Aave governance. But here, whitelisters play an important role. So whitelisters are people with KYC and things like that, i.e. it's going to be institutions. Now, they are guardians in the ARC market. Sorry, yeah, they are guardians in the ARC market who will provide all KYC and onboarding services to users. So, again, we're talking about institutions here because that's what they need. They cannot participate in this kind of stuff without KYC, AML, and all that kind of stuff. Now, they also maintain the sustainability and security of ARC by keeping a check on what AIP should be approved. By doing so, they make sure it does not hamper the compliance obligations. And this is where it is. Compliance, compliance, compliance. That is what is required for it to go mainstream. Now, if the move progresses to be a success, we can expect several institutions to create diverse use cases of the technology and help DeFi achieve its purpose. Like I said, Aave already has a financial uh, license in the UK. It's in the UK or Europe, something like that, somewhere over there. I can't remember it right off the top of my head. They are looking to get one. I believe it's in like Hong Kong or Singapore or that, so somewhere over in Asia. And again, this is the uh, ARC is the Aave Pro that they were talking about. Maybe they've changed the name now. I'm not fully up to speed with it. But this is where institutions start to give yield because you go to your bank now, how much are you getting? If you're getting any positive return, if you're not in negative, it's probably less than a percent. And if it's some special account, they may be giving you one to two percent. And I don't even think there's any of that. I think the best one I saw was about one percent interest you can earn. And again, I, I don't know too much about it. I, I'd be skeptical of any banks offering that at the moment because they most of them just can't. But through these protocols, they absolutely can. Now, again, Aave, you can earn, you know, I don't even know what the percent is on the stable coins at the moment. I haven't looked, but I'm going to say it's probably up around sort of 6 8%. Now, the Aave Pro or ARC isn't going to offer that. That's what you need to remember because this is the banks and financial institutions taking uh, their share of the yield and then they're going to offer something like 4%, 2%, 3%, which again, no other bank is doing at the moment. So for me, I'm not going to be using uh, Aave, for, uh, sorry, Aave Pro for that purpose because I can just use the normal Aave protocol uh, and earn more. But this is how it gets farmed out to the masses, you know, people like, you know, your mum and your dad and things like that, if they're a little bit older and they just don't understand, all of a sudden their banks are going to be saying, hey, look, we've got 3 4% on offer. They're going to jump at it considering they've been getting less than a percent and they're going to be stoked not understanding that the institutions are then taking their slice of the pie. Again, if there's 10% being offered by Aave and then they're going to offer you 4%, they're making quite a cut. Now, I don't know the exact ins and outs of how it's going to work you know the percentages and things like that but there was talk that Aave Pro would end up giving four percent uh, to the investors again sorry the institutions would offer four percent through Aave but this is it all happening now again this is why I'm moving into Aave uh, on a bigger scale at the moment now I'm not dumping everything I'm not going crazy because this isn't guaranteed yet none of this is for sure but it's this kind of news that makes me super bullish. I mean, what is, you know, one of the things that most important to people outside of obviously health and family? Money. How to make more money. Aave 
is a way to make more money. Again, it, this is the new kind of banking financial system. Now, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. Again, none of this has been confirmed. It's just been talked about and rumored. But again, if this comes true, have a look at Aave's price. Boom, pumped up, had this massive pump. I mean, good Lord, what was this? Let's have a look. And we're not gonna worry about the wicks too much. Two thousand two hundred and eighteen percent. That is one hell of a move. And now look what it's been doing: traveling sideways for what was this? Basically, it's been traveling sideways all year. Sideways, sideways, sideways. We've had peaks, we've had lows, but on average, really, I think if you kind of yeah, I think the average price for Ave over the last year would be around about three hundred and thirteen dollars. Thereabouts, again, give or take a little bit, maybe you can come down here. It is currently under its average price. And look, it could continue to come down. Here's where there's really been some support and resistance. So if by some miracle, Aave continued to get down to $200, I mean, that to me looks like a buy point. We had a false, uh, you know, fall through at the bottom, but again, touch point, touch point, touch point, and again, coming down. But Let's have a look at it against ETH, even more bullish. Again, in my opinion, it is broken through the floor. Now, it hasn't completely crashed through it. It's just slowly trading down. But again, DeFi is going to make a comeback at some stage. I don't know when it is. Maybe it won't make another comeback in this cycle unless we are now in the super cycle that people talk about. But once it does, I would rather have been picking up Aave somewhere down here than picking it up up here and only getting this much gain and then it, that's if you're smart enough to sell and then having to suffer through all these again they're not really losses in the dollar term they, they can be if you bought at the absolute high but it's just against ETH that's been outperforming it so for me I'm in this is where I'm picking up Aave I believe it is going to be you know that and curve really is kind of what I think will be the big sort of blue chips compound still there but they had a few issues so we'll have to wait and see so for me Aave just looks brilliant against ETH again this could go lower I don't want people to get confused and not say because it's already setting a new low it could go lower I don't know how much lower it can go but I don't think it's going to go too much lower and again you go up here it's old peak is a third of whatever Ethereum's price was now again, people are talking about Ethereum maybe going to 10,000, maybe going to 20,000 in this bull run. People are saying that Ethereum could go to 100,000 in the next sort of five years, maybe 10 years. Well, imagine Aave gets back to just its old all-time high, a third of that price. So Ethereum, let's say five years time, is now worth $100,000. And I'm not saying it will be, that's just talk. And Aave goes to a third of that. That's $30,000. Aave is currently trading for $260. I mean, you tell me what those returns are. And that is only if Aave gets back to its old all-time high, let alone sets a new all-time high against Ethereum. So again, these are just things to consider. I'm not telling you to rush out and buy Aave. I'm just telling you at these prices, I am happy to buy Aave. I'm not throwing the kitchen sink at it, but I am, I'll say, somewhat aggressively buying it because Aave is a project that hasn't pumped. It is down. Lots of other things are pumping. DeFi has been fairly quiet. Curve's made a bit of a move. Uh, Terra Luna's done all right, but a lot of the other DeFi projects have been quiet. And again, this is one that could, and I repeat, could get institutional adoption and that will make a massive difference. Last but not least, Aave against Bitcoin. Again, it's got a similar pattern. Peaks up, comes down. Peaks up, comes down. Peaks up, comes down. And it's generally setting new higher lows. Look what we have here. Looks like it's coming down to possibly touch around about here, which would be support. Now, there's no guarantees it comes all the way down here because we just don't know. But at the moment, Aave, massive sideways on the dollar. Average price of around about 300, it's under that price at the moment. It is setting a new all time low against Ethereum. Now, not in a bad way, because again, the dollar value is still holding. It's not tanking and crashing. It just hasn't been able to keep up with ETH, which has been on a pump. So, again, for me, this price just looks, it's a buy zone for me. 
I am buying Aave. I'm letting you know right now. All right, and again, against Bitcoin, it's doing something similar. The volatility is getting low. It looks like it's getting quiet. And this is usually when things start to fire up and absolutely fly. Now, I'm not saying it does it from right here. It could go sideways for a whole, a whole lot longer and maybe even come down. But at some stage, it's going to pump back up. I just don't know when, but I get the feeling it will be sooner rather than later. Now, another thing that I found that I'm super bullish on, Polygon. Now, Invest Answers put this up. This is for the max speeds. Now, at the moment, Polygon can do 44.7 transactions per second, nearly 45. That is out eclipsing basically any other layer two on uh, Ethereum. Max theoretical is 7,200 transactions per second. Now, what you need to remember is they have moved to uh, ZK rollups and things like that. So that's about 2,000 per second. And again, that, they'll come up with other things to do as well. So you can add another 2,000 you know, onto their you know, possible 7,000 again with ZK rollups. But what I found really interesting was optimistic rollups possible 20,000 and look Arbitrum 1 40,000 so yes it's you know horrible the way Ethereum fees are at the moment but once Ethereum 2.0 rolls out they're talking about you know 100 transactions per second and that's on the main net and maybe 1400 possibly more but then you look at these others all of a sudden Ethereum yes it's got heaps of growing pains and I'm super frustrated with it but imagine once all these things start to roll out, that is literally tens of thousands of transactions, if not hundreds of thousands probably actually, transactions per second that can be handled on Ethereum. Now, not exactly on the main chain, but on its side chains and things like that. So very, very interesting. But again, Polygon leading the way at the moment. Let's have a look at Maddox price sideways for such a long time, basically, you, know, you could say around about here since April or maybe again sort of around about here if we find the average price since May. Sideways action. It's got higher, it's got lower. Sideways action. Again, look at this big, it looks like a bull flag. Now I don't know if a bull flag can play out exactly like this and I showed the other day this was a 20,000, 18, 19,000 percent move. Is Polygon getting ready to do something different? And at 18,000% move from around about $2 takes it up into the $200 range. I'm not saying it can do that. I'm just saying what happens if it did. Have a look at Matic now against Ethereum. Big consolidation all the way down because Ethereum's been going up and Polygon's just been holding steady. And now look at this. It just keeps bouncing off that line sideways, sideways, sideways. And look, it's done something like this before comes down eventually find support now not exactly the same but similar pops up comes down finds some support again old support sort of resistance makes a big move this one have a look at this against bitcoin and it's done these moves before it makes a move up now what i need to do is really push this up have a look at this pumps up comes down pumps up comes down pumps up this one particularly comes down finds support and bounces around here for a really really long time before it makes its next massive move up now what are we seeing right now boom makes this big move all the way up close this down just a little bit comes down and now consolidation 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 what do you think most likely comes next? Imagine this is what's happening right now. Again, with Matic, this was at $2. I've got no idea what this price was, but I'm going to say this was cents when this was happening. 10 cents, maybe 20 cents if you're lucky. I think even less. I'm going to say this is probably uh, in the cents range, literally. And then you start to see things like this. So two coins that I am buying at the moment, Matic, Aave. Because they haven't had really big pumps for quite some time. Don't get me wrong, Matic did, and even Aave did. Sorry, where's Aave? It's had big pumps, but now they're coming down and they're getting very quiet with not a lot of people talking about them. 
They're going to have their moment to shine again. Cardano is something that I'm looking at. A lot of fight about eToro, but uh, Bitstamp just added them. So Bitstamp's much bigger than eToro, so that should make up for that difference. And it's when things are quiet, no one's talking about them and forgot about them. That is when you want to start getting in because the price is basically at a premium and eventually it will again if it's a good project and good things going on i believe cardano is that i believe Aave is that i believe matic is that so eventually again the cycle will turn and it will come back to it so these are things that i'm looking at and again the news about Aave pro now arc i'm super bullish on that matic again look at those transaction per second all the adoption it's getting it's still got uh, zk roll-ups to come and things like that and the hermes network it's integrated it i really like all these projects and i think it's just a matter of time until they start to fire back up as well all right that's it from me stay safe be kind of one another hopefully you're all on that game train at the moment things are starting to look good and i'll see you next time